So yeah, this is uh, monitoring your Elixir application with uh, Prometheus. Um, so I'm from SmartLogic. Uh, we build web and mobile applications. Um, if you have a project, we can help. Uh, we've been around for 13 years uh, and have been doing Elixir for uh, three of those. Yeah, so we're gonna first cover a little context, see how we're gonna set up uh, Prometheus, how to get some metrics, or to set up metrics, instrument them, and then kind of take a look at uh, Prometheus, Grafana, and how to get some alerts out. Um, so you might be asking, what is Prometheus? Um, so their, their slogan is for metrics to insight. It's a Go application that um, pulls your application, so it scrapes metrics out of your application, so it's a polar instead of a pusher. Um, uh, and then the other thing we're gonna look at is Grafana. So this is the open platform for beautiful analytics and monitoring. Um, this is the thing that will actually be doing your dashboards. Um, yeah. Uh, so some other options out there instead of Prometheus. So you might have heard of these as well. So there's New Relic, CloudWatch, Datadog, StatsD, and Graphite. And the list kind of goes on forever. Um, yeah. The other thing we're gonna look at, uh, this is the application. It's open source, it's MIT. Uh, this is the thing we're going to be looking at to, so you can see what it looks like uh, in a real ap application uh, to be instrumented with Prometheus. So this is at grapevine.house. That's the German spelling of house. Um, it's, a, it's on GitHub at Ostrich slash grapevine. Um, so we can kind of take a, a pull through this. So this is the website. So this is grapevine, where you heard it. Uh, so we can go ahead. Uh, we can see that this is my game Midmud uh, online. So the thing that we're gonna kinda wanna see is like, to, so we, we can take one application, or, or one metrics like through the whole uh, pipeline, right? So when someone comes here and registers an account, uh, and then my super secret password. All right, so I, I just registered, can get a, verify my email, all right? So now I can come here uh, click play, we'll see, we'll see what that looks like at the end. Uh, so I can look at a game, click play, uh, start, start playing this. Kind of showed this off last night. This is Xventure, the other uh, application you can take a peek at. Um, so this is kind of what, what the application is doing. This is connecting through a WebSocket uh, down into the server, which then does a Telnet connection out to the remote game. Um, Telnet is still alive. Don't use it though. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so <laughs> uh, we'll be able to see, uh, I forgot to enable this, but there, the, the other thing, uh, yeah, anyways, so there, there should be a gauge down here. That's, that's, we, we could see messages being sent back and forth. Um, so yeah, uh, so that's, that's Grapevine. This is kind of the, the basics of it. You can move around. Uh, it's, it's just a web client for the, for the game. Um, right, so that's the application we're gonna look at. Um, so how do, how do, like, what do we do to get there, uh, to get metrics out of your application, right? So these are the, the three uh, basic libraries that you need. So Prometheus X, that's gonna set up all our counters and gauges and histograms. Prometheus plug, plugs is how you're gonna uh, actually export that data. Uh, and then telemetry is how we're gonna instrument it. Um, all right, so, so what do we do? Let's start with trying to export our metrics. Uh, so we have metrics.plug uh, exporter, um, which just uses Prometheus plug exporter. Uh, this sets up a whole bunch of stuff for us. Um, so then you go to your web endpoint, put in the plug, uh, kind of somewhere uh, towards the top, towards the bottom, doesn't super matter. Um, then we're gonna have a setup module. So this is metrics.setup. Uh, with a, a, single method, a single function in there, uh, metrics plug exporter setup. So that's gonna call the thing that actually sets up all of the counters and whatnot, which, is, uh, which are set up as ETS tables uh, under the hood. Um, and then you're gonna call that function at the start of your application. So sometime before you're, you boot it back to the supervision tree, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna call that function. Uh, so what does that get us? So this gets us just a whole bunch of, this is what the Prometheus uh, uh, metrics format looks like. There's a few comments, so the type, help, the, the label, this is the label, or sorry, this is the metric name, and then this is the, uh, the actual value. So we can actually take a look at what this looks like. So it just kind of goes on. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of, of VM, here we see VM allocators, there's a bunch of those. 
uh, along with some of the other ones we have for our application. Um, right, so now we want to, uh, we, we have metrics getting exported. Uh, now let's actually instrument our application. Um, so this is uh, metrics account, account instrumenter. Um, and these are all real mo modules. You can go find them in Grapevine under lib, lib metrics account instrumenter. Um, so you see the real, the, the full thing. So this, we're going to use Prometheus metric at the top. This is also going to have a setup function. Uh, we're going to have a, our series of events. So we're going to have an account is created, someone signed in, someone signed out. Uh, and then we're going to loop over each of those events uh, to deal with them. So inside of this, we're going to take that, uh, the list of the event, uh, the, the event list. We're going to join them all together with an underscore. Uh, and then we have grapevine accounts and then that name. Uh, so this, this naming scheme is kind of important. Um, you want to start with your application, and then I've been doing kind of a sub-module, the event name, and then you can see here the actual counter name is underscore total. Um, so you'll, you'll want to, uh, yeah, so you want to start with your, your application name, name it whatever you want, and then you want to finish it with the, if it's a counter, total, or if it's uh, specifically dealing with bytes, you want to do underscore bytes, underscore total. Um, or if it's uh, anything with time, you want to do you want to do seconds. So there's base units in Prometheus. Um, no, there we go. And then so you can you can take a look at the Prometheus docs. I don't have internet, uh, but there's the there's a link. <laughs> um, all right. So you want prefix with your application, use base units, and then suffix with the unit. Um, so now we add our instrumenter into that setup. Uh, and now we have those metrics. So we can, if we zoom in on this thing, right, so we should be able to see grapevine accounts session logout, right? So there it is. All right, so now how do we actually like, right, so we have our, we, we have our metrics set up. This is how we uh, this is, these are the, the function calls that you kind of drop throughout your code base on like specific spots that matter to you, right? So in this case, we have telemetry execute, uh, grapevine accounts create. Uh, so this is the version of telemetry that you're probably about to use if you're going to try this at home uh, is 0.3. Um, between starting this talk and now, they've also put out 0.4, so it looks like this. <laughs> um, Hopefully they didn't just put out a 0.5. Um, but uh, so th this instead pushes, before this, it was the event name, comma, the count. Uh, and that was specifically a number. Uh, there's also, you can do comma metadata. Um, but if you don't need it, you don't have to send it. So now the count is a count uh, map. So you can pass extra things. So it doesn't just have to be value. It could be uh, like bytes. Like wh whatever, whatever name matters to you, you can send. Um, so now we've hooked into telemetry, or sorry, we have the execute lines for telemetry, and now we have to actually hook into them. Um, so this kind of extends the setup event before. So we're going to take our event name, and we're going to prepend it with grapevine accounts. Um, so, yep. So that, that's our full event that we have. So we have right grapevine accounts, and then if you remember, the first list was just create, right? So that just gets appended to grapevine accounts create. Uh, so that's what that is. So when we have telemetry attached, so we're going to use that name we generated up here. This name has to be unique for your whole system. Uh, so that way, like, we're already kind of namespacing this metric. Um, so it's good to just reuse it. Uh, so the name, the event, this is the thing that is triggering, right? And then we're going to pass it a, a callback function that this will call. And then the last one is a config that can, you can push in. So this is just a static config. For every time it gets called, uh, we'll use that as well. So in this case, we don't need it, so it's just nil. Um, yeah, and so one, one kind of small s difference, you might see it attach and attach many. Um, I had previously been using attach many, so we have, uh, there was a, a big list of events. So you, you could previously just say grapevine accounts is your name and pass it a huge list uh, and then a single function. Um, but the thing to note is that uh, if any of your handle functions fail, uh, telemetry will just 
will catch the error and then just boot it out of the, the handle. So like it will never run again until your application restarts or you, re, you reattach it. Um, so this way, uh, if, if you had a list of 15 and one in the middle started failing, it's gonna eject all 15 of them. So you don't want that. Um, so if you do each one separately, then just that one gets evicted uh, and the, the rest can carry on. Um, so here's what our handle events function looks like. Uh, I just have a, the handy uh, function head at the top. So we have event, count, metadata. Metadata is the thing that you pass in for each uh, uh, telemetry execute and then the config is the static one passed above. So for this case, we don't actually care about anything in the, in the count, so those are all just underscores. Um, so we're just gonna pattern match on the function, or sorry, on the event, uh, and then this is where you can, you can do whatever you want, right? So you can do a logger info, new account created, so you can see in your logs, it's a nice little happy message. Um, and then this is gonna use uh, counter increment, the name, this is, this is, this is what Prometheus X looks like. Um, yeah, so it's just, a, it's just incrementing the counter. Um, and then a small, small uh, aside on concurrency. Uh, so uh, telemetry execute runs in the process that calls it. So it's not sending, it's not casting a message to a single gen server that's gonna get bottlenecked. Um, this is spread out. Um, Prometheus counters, gauges, uh, histograms and all that are tracked in a public uh, writable ETS table. Um, so it, it will be fast. Nothing is, nothing should bottleneck behind a, a, a gen server. Uh, so now we can view our metrics, right? So we have uh, slash metrics, we have the Prometheus server, and then Grafana. Um, yeah, so here's our, our Prometheus metrics here. That's really zoomed in. Um, yeah. Uh, so I guess first, our, our, our basic Prometheus setup, so like how do we tell this to, to actually start pulling our application? So they have what's called a scrape config, uh, which has jobs. Uh, so this is our, the job name is Grapevine. This is gonna get it added to a label to the actual final metric. Uh, so you, you can have it be, or you can have a bunch of jobs that, that all pull into the same metrics. Uh, Prometheus, per, or sorry, yeah. Um, so then you have uh, static configs. You can set it up with, I think, console and I don't know, all kinds of things. I've only ever needed the static configs. Uh, so you, you give it all the targets that it needs. In this case, uh, localhost 4000. There's an assumed HTTP at the front colon slash slash and then a, a slash metrics. You can configure all that. Uh, highly recommend in actual production to use uh, TLS. Um, yeah, so that's what that looks like. Here's what the actual target, that's kind of small. So we can take a look at the, the actual web page. That's what this looks like. So here's, here's the actual endpoint it's hitting. We can see that it's up. And then, then it adds some additional labels. Um, yeah, and you can see uh, when it's scraping, et cetera. Um, so this is, so if we, wanna, if we wanna look at this create, we can go ahead and see when I actually made that. So that was, that was there. So this is the counter going from zero to one. Um, so this is kind of boring, but you can do uh, functions, which we'll see in a bit, to do uh, better ones. Um, and then you can set up rules for your application. Um, so this is a Prometheus metric or uh, function expression, I guess they're called. Uh, that is, this this checks for the increase of this counter over the last five minutes. As long if it's bigger than zero, this uh, rule will start triggering. Uh, you, so you can add annotations. These annotations will show up in the emails that you can get sent from Alert Manager, uh, and we can see what that looks like. So we should. I left this web client open. We should have an alert firing. Yeah, so th this, this we can see that the, this is just a really st stupid uh, version of it. So it's telnet client count is bigger than zero. Right, so you, you can see what this looks like. And yeah, it's okay, it's at one, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can see that that, that is firing. Right, uh, and then we can connect Grafana to this. Um, and so for Grafana, you set up dashboards. That's what, a uh, tiny picture, we can look at the, the real full one. Uh, so this is the actual, this, this is the dashboard that I have for my instance of uh, uh, Grapevine. So you can see the number of attached games, the number of sockets, uh, 
the number of open Web cl Connect clients. Um, and then this is what I was hoping would have data, but apparently I forgot to actually set it up. Um, but you can sort of see here, I wonder if, yeah, that'll get bigger. Uh, so you can, this, this merges together a whole bunch of different metrics. So I, uh, Telnet has something called interpret as command. It's uh, the byte 255. Uh, so that is not an actual ASCII character. So that's a signal to the, to the binary stream that something after this is about to be a command. So do something with it, don't display it. Uh, so in this case, there's a, you can do negotiation. So uh, the server can say, I wanna do this. And then the client is actually saying, no, don't do that. Or sorry, won't do that. Um, uh, yeah, and so there's, there's do, don't, will, won't, um, something called the MUD stats server protocol, sorry, MUD server stats protocol, so one of those two. Uh, we can see when line mode's turning on, when someone requests the terminal type, uh, the thing I was hoping to see is that GMCP messages, um, which is an out-of-band protocol for Telnet, uh, I guess specifically for MUDs, that kind of pass around uh, JSON with each other. Uh, and then the other thing to note is that you can push some of these metrics to the other side of the y-axis. Um, so that way, the, if the GMCP one should have been at like 60, <laughs> uh, the, the web, the, this web client open count doesn't just completely get squished at the bottom. Um, so that one can be off to the side. All right, and then we have a, our, our demo. Uh, yeah, so that was that, sorry. Oh, no, okay. Uh, the other thing I was hoping is that we should have an email here. Sweet, so this is, this is the alert manager that's actually, this is MailHog, so it's just local. Uh, so we can see that what, a, what an alert actually looks like. Right, so we have uh, the web client is firing. Um, so then this gets an alert. You can set this up for specifically uh, any of these rules. So any of these, these alerts that you have in the rule, fire, rule, uh, rule file can get triggered. Um, so this one also should have triggered, but it didn't. Um, so this is uh, an increase. This is the increase to try and capture that someone signed up. Um, but it apparently didn't trigger, so something's wrong. But uh, uh, the other, you can also silence alerts in metrics, so you can you can give it the different any kind of labels and matchers and whatnot. Um, you can you can be pretty smart about this. Um, let's see, maybe I'll. Uh, oh right, I'm signed into the wrong person. That will be why that's not everything. <laughs> Uh, so let's try and get the gauge showing. Hopefully this will pre-fill for me. Oop, this is. All right, so we're gonna have a purple health gauge. So this might, uh, actually we have to quit. So we authorize our connection. That's not that's over Telnet, but we're not asking for a password because that's insane. Um, yeah. So here's our health gauge. So we can go fight the goblin that's here. So he's going to start beating us up. Uh, so we can start to see some messages flowing. Uh, so there's our spike. Let's change this to the last five minutes. Um, so we can see every time a new GMCP message comes in, we get it. We increment the counter, which then goes up. Uh, we can watch it happen, and hopefully I didn't die. Oop. So let's, let's heal myself a few times to let that keep going. Uh, but yeah, so there's, there's a, the, the counter's actually happening. If I can, if this goblin will keep beating us up, uh, we might actually be able to trigger an alert for that as well. I'm trying to, yeah, so I have, I have it if it goes over, 60, it's so like one a second, roughly. Um, that's mostly to just tell me that someone's using it, <laughs> uh, since this is still like a sort of high, uh, it's a very niche market, so knowing when this is being used is good. Um, so it looks like we're at 60, and then it peaked. Uh, so it's just the once a second, oh, and I died. That would be why it uh, did that. 
Uh, so let's see what else will trigger that. So we can shoot a magic missile at the goblin. Uh, maybe a frost ray. Um, let's see. So we did indeed tr trigger it. There we go, 71. Um, so this, this, the alerts only fire every, I think, 15 seconds. You can configure this. This is just to make sure that Prometheus isn't doing so much work that it's going to uh, fall over. So there's our six seconds ago. And if it worked right, uh, so this is an instantaneous rate, uh, no data points found. That's, uh, okay, I remember why that happens. So this, this, is, uh, this is actually a clustered application and I forgot to scrape the second node uh, that's sitting there. So targets are important. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much everything. So to wrap it up, um, I've been streaming on Twitch every Monday at 12 uh, Eastern for an hour. Uh, so this is at uh, Elixir Development, so we can, you can actually watch me do Grapevine or XVenture. Uh, so this is at twitch.tv slash smartlogictv. Um, make sure to follow and all that fun stuff. Uh, and then the, as Justice has uh, not let you not know about, uh, we've been doing a, a new a podcast called Smart Software Smart Logic, podcast at smartlogic.io. Um, go check it out. Uh, and then, uh, any questions? And I guess while we're waiting, uh, this is my cat Odo. If anyone is interested in a sticker, I have one. <laughs>